Welcome to the video. I'm going to talk about the, the top benefits of disc brakes. We're going to talk about Lance Armstrong. And look at this. This is the first of all the debate that rim brakes don't have enough power. Rim brakes have more than enough power. You've got to use the right pads and tune your bike properly and make sure your rims are good quality. Look at this. This is in the Tour de France, and this is a uh, burn off. And he's had a, he grabbed the, too much front brake, not paying attention, just grabbed too much, and then boom, lucky. Oh, ouch. Lucky he's okay. His bike's probably have to go in the bin, though, uh, later that day. And he's lucky he didn't bust his collarbone. So rim brakes have enough power. More than enough power. All right, they have more than enough power. It looks like he's running Shimano Gerace calipers, which are extra incredibly strong rim brake. And he's on carbon rims, and he's probably using some good quality Swiss stop pads. So if you want more power, if you want more power, use better brake pads. All right? All right and tune, learn how to tune your brakes. You don't need disc brakes with the Tour de France. Anyway. Disc brakes, I love disc brakes. My mountain bike, my gravel bike, my e-bike, love disc brakes. I'm not a disc brake hater. I'm just being honest out there. You don't need disc brakes for road racing. You don't need disc brakes for time trials. And you don't need disc brakes for triathlon, all right? <laughs> you get, you're getting scammed. Well, not scammed, but you're getting, you know, you're getting finessed. It's disingenuous. You know, let's have a look at Lance Armstrong here. Lance Armstrong shilling. For his new sponsors, which only make disc brake road bikes, and also George as well. Isn't look, look, listen, listen to the dribble Lance and George say. And, and I'm a fan of Lance Armstrong's story. I knew all along, along he was on the juice. I've got no issues with that. My issue is here, though, is where he's shilling for the disc brakes. And uh, this is this for me is the worst thing Lance Armstrong's ever done. Let's have a listen. Yeah, and you, George, you got a little intel on this about some of the you know, we talk a lot on the show about innovation and uh, and and. How disc brakes are just almost totally commonplace. They're commonplace, Lance, because of corporate sponsorship pressure. Not because they're better. If the disc brakes were better for the Tour de France riders, Roglic, Tadej, Egan the Vegan, Banals, Team Sky, etc. would all be running discs. They don't. Right? When it matters, when every second matters for GC, the top GC riders choose rim brakes. So, Lance, let's not pretend it's some innovation that road racers need, because it certainly isn't. Power meters, DI2, mirrors. Mirrors would be a great idea. Martinez crashed out the other yesterday because he was looking over his shoulder, so was Bob Jungles. If they had mirrors, it would be a lot safer. Mirrors definitely enhance performance. DI2 shifting, that can be pretty good for the racer. You know, power meters, power meters are a game changer, but disc brakes, no Tour de France rider has ever complained that a Jura's caliper doesn't have enough braking on a rim with Swiss, no, 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 zero, zip. So Lance, let's stop the dribble. All right. Um, th that doesn't mean that they're mandatory. So these guys on, you know, day 13, they could ride disc brakes. Day, you know, tomorrow they could skip it. Now we're seeing guys. Some teams can, Cervelo can, you know, Bianchi riders can, Pinarello can. But, you know, the reason Cervelo even pay big bonuses for their riders, if they, if they choose to ride disc rim, they get a big bonus if they ride the disc. That's just fact. If you get a stage win on disc brake bike, on a team where it's optional, you get a wicked bonus. You get a wicked bonus. All right? So these riders are going, oh, I'll get a cash bonus. All right, I'll have a go. But no rider's going to, you know, and the riders on Trek, Specialized, you know, BMC, they don't have the choice. They don't have the choice, Lance. You left that out. You know that, but you left it out. Guys go between disc brakes and old school caliper brakes. I think you got a little scoop on that. Old school, you know. How about tried and tested? Yeah, well, I was surprised to see um, both uh, Pogacar and uh, Primos uh, without disc brakes tested. Look, look at these smiling, like, like what, what, what are you guys even, like, how are you trolling? I'm surprised that, you know, Roglic and Tadej would use heavy bikes heavier bikes with slower wheel changes and you know i'm just really surprised that they would like risk having a rubbing caliper on the last climb of the day you know have a crash bent a rotor and then have his rubbing rotor the whole way up the climb i'm surprised that they would go with with rim brakes i'm surprised man it's like it's weird isn't it let's let's listen more and i just assumed it was a weight issue but apparently at least one of them they they didn't get the disc brake bikes until um the Dauphiné, so they're just quite simply not used to riding them. Right. Oh my God! What the the not used to a, a world to a rider. Oh, I'm not used to riding this. Oh wow! How do these things work? You oh you squeeze the lever. You squeeze the lever and it and it, the piston go. Oh oh! I think I need a bit of time to get used to that. Like come on! I, I can slip and swatch my disc brake bikes, my rim brakes in seconds. You know, like what? 
Um, and it's not a weight issue. So apparently they're it's not a weight issue, apparently. Really? It's not a weight issue, apparently. Can you imagine someone giving Lance Armstrong a disc brake bike in 2003? You know, can you imagine? If, if 2003, we go back to Lance Armstrong, and we, we give him a 2020 Trek Madone, which is about the same weight as Lance Armstrong's climbing bikes in the 2003 tour, and we say, hey, Lance, use this disc brake bike. He's going to be like, you think I need disc brakes? You think I can't descend, brood? What are you on about? You know, he would get that disc brake bike and fling it and go sell this Trek Madone disc brake to some fat CEO, barrister, surgeon, dentist, whatever. I ain't racing it. Boom, and he'd slam the bus door, you know. That's what he'd be doing. And then he'd put his head out the bus door and go, send those strippers in. Boom, shut the door again, you know. Disc brakes. Lance would be like, disc brakes. I want me to ride disc brakes. <laughs> you know. So anyway, the troll, this is, look, at, look at George's face. Like, he is shilling hard for them BMC Team Machine SLR disc brake bikes. Let's listen. Apparently, their bikes are only a couple hundred grams heavier, which is a gel or two in your pocket, so that's easy <laughs> to make the difference. This brake bike's only a couple of hundred grams, one or two hundred grams heavier, which is a gel or two. Which gels are a hundred grams, you know? Which gel is a hundred grams? The difference between rim brake and disc brake bikes is just a gel or two. It's like, what the fuck? What? Like, how do these guys keep a straight face? I mean, I guess they're used to that, talking bullshit to the you know, whole careers. But hey, you know, it's, it's crazy, man. And, and it's sad to see this shilling going on. The reason why I speak out about disc brakes is to give the end consumer the absolute truth. Give you the 100% truth, all right? Not a half truth, not a... Uh, nah, 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 nah. I sell disc brakes. I sell rim brake bikes. Someone comes to me, Harley, I want the very, very fastest bike for a time trial for fitness for Strava, road... What do I get? I might get the rim brake. Yeah, I live in the wet. Get the rim brake. Use alloy rims. Swiss stop pads. Get the rim brake. I want to do gravel riding. You know, I want to, like, I'm a fully loaded touring bike. You know, I want to get that Morse and just go riding for the Andes. What do I want? Okay, disc brakes then. You're going to have more more, uh, more power when you need it for tired hands after a long day riding up and down mountains and you know, just in the wet conditions, there's no doubt about it. If you're riding a fully loaded bike, then disc brakes can be better for you, you know? But you don't have the demands of a world tour racer, so you don't need disc brakes in that element of, like, where disc brakes can be dangerous because you're overheating. But anyway, there's the whole education that goes on with that as well. And I educate my consumers, the dangers of disc brakes or the pros and cons. It's not just, like, get a disc brake because your surgeon mate's got one as well or your dentist has got one, you know? Like, there's education going on there. So this is where, this is where I'm coming from. Place of education. These are guys that are coming from places of sponsorship. Uh, so it's not a weight issue, it's just a simple fact. Not a weight issue, it's just a... It's not a weight issue. George Hincapie says it's not a weight issue because a disc brakes is one or two gels difference. And can you imagine the dumb Americans out there and dumb Australians and dumb Germans and just dummies in general or noobs. You know, maybe I'm a bit harsh with the word dumb. Gullible, trusting, ignorant people out there who go, wow, like George Hincapie has spoken, Lance Armstrong has spoken, the weight issue is non-issue with disc and rim. And then they go and buy a Trekamonda or a, a Cannondale or a Pinarello disc or a Specialized. Let's go to the Specialized because everyone knows Specialized. A Specialized SL7 disc brake is heavier out of the box than a Specialized SL3 S-Works Tarmac from 2009. Literally. It's heavier out of the box. Like, what? <laughs> you know so how is 10-year-old bike lighter than the 2020 stock, you know? Simple as that. I've bought, I went out one time, bought two bikes, a Dura Ace uh, disc brake and a Dura Ace rim brake, right, in the same week. Same bike, the Giant Defy, and rode them, and I was like, man, it's night and day difference. Night and day difference. Night and day difference in performance and feel. So both great bikes, but if you want something for racing, stick with rim. Stick with, oh, but Giant Defy's not a race bike, Holly. Like, you need to get, like, a tight. Like, I've ridden those as well, you know. And there's a reason why Tarmax, the SL5 disc brake, was on clearance for so long. Because disc brakes ride like crap compared to the rim brake equivalent. They just, it's just extra weight. 500 grams or so, you feel it. You feel the extra spokes in the wheel that you need. It's less arrows, more spoke tinging, uh, so it's disc rubbing tings, and it's more spokes in the wheel. It just feels heavier, you know? It's still fast enough, but it's, if you want the absolute fastest for your money, you're going to go rim brake, right? If you want the least maintenance, the most dependability, you're going to go rim brake. It's just how it is. Now, if you're riding a loaded touring bike, 
then yeah, disc brakes can be give the extra power because you got fatter tires. That's nothing. You got fatter tires. If you got skinny little tires, disc brakes can be too much power and you can just slide out. So if you got fatter tires, then you can handle. And your big loaded bike, you can handle it. And here's the thing: when you're riding down mountains on a loaded touring bike or gravel bike, you're not going the same speeds as Tour de France riders are. You got fatter tires, you're going slower. Disc brakes, okay. Tour de France riders, higher speeds where you can't afford to lock up your back wheel or are you going to go crash crash bandicoot that's just how it is let's listen the simple fact that they're some of those guys just aren't used to, used to riding disc brakes which is a little strange that's very very strange george these are incredibly gifted riders technical wise and you know that now you just dribble them you dribble them like you throw you throw cigar any bike and you can ride it up and down the hill you know downhill skill wise just boom you could give cigar one of my bikes and he could ride downhill better than i could Simple as that. You can give Sagan or pretty much any pro rider, world tour rider, not any, but most to pro tour riders, one of my rim brake bikes and fly them down Norton Summit and they would go faster down there than I have, even though I've done it hundreds of times, up almost a thousand times. One, because they got more skill. Two, we'll take the risks. Simple as that. It's not, a, I'm not used to disc brakes thing. You know, being that we're in 2020 and we've all been riding disc brakes for a couple of years now. It because you guys don't have to worry about performance anymore. I don't have to worry about performance that much, but those guys who are paid to win or get points, performance matters. It's it is a different feel, right? I mean, if you go from uh, obviously the disc brake works better, especially in the rain, but especially in the rain. Let's have a look at Lopez. You know, it's a different. Uh, you know, it's just a, it's a different touch on the brake, and so that's you know. that's true. It is a different touch. It can lock up your rear wheel a lot easier. And it can heat expand, which causes more lockups. But, I, we, but by the way, who's the bike sponsor that didn't get them the disc bikes until fucking three weeks ago? Well, like, hello, hello. But we did. It wasn't about that, Lance. It was about performance. It was about performance, and you know that Lance is trolling. Lance, it's almost like Lance is throwing shade at Bianchi, Pinarello, etc. See a comment. really slow neutral wheel change that you pointed oh, out. Oh yeah, today. That, that thought that was interesting as well. Now. We pointed out, I think, in the first or second stage of the tour, that uh, you know these guys, all these mechanics, got the drill ready, pop out the uh, the uh, through axle and get the wheel in. It's super quick now. Uh, but you need a you need a speed drill now to take a wheel out. Now that that's the reason right there, guys. You don't not even talking about. But Mavic, it, he's it. So you know, right? But if you, let's say you're a pro rider, right? You get a flat tire. You can take the wheel out yourself and hold it up and say, I need a front wheel. Now, if you've got a disc brake, you have to wait there and go, and then the guy's like, front or rear? And you're like, front? Oh, I can't hear you. I need a front wheel. You know what I mean? So then the guy comes out. You're basically standing on the road like a noob. Like, I don't know how to take out a front or rear wheel. You know what I mean? Slows things right up. Causes disc brake wheel change anxiety. It's a new uh, DSM-4 mental health market. Somehow they don't have that. They had the little tool, and the guy's just moving in it by hand. It I mean, that's an that's got to take another... 30 seconds. There you go. That's another reason disc brakes have no place in the world too. 30 second wheel changes? No thanks. Change the wheel by doing it. Why like doesn't that. he have the drill? Like if all the team mechanics have drills. What, what if the drill runs out of the back? Like why would they don't need disc brakes, Lance? Carson, where's, where's yeah, he had like it looked like a it looked like an old uh, It's uh, like the old crossbar yeah, we used cross to use in a car in a car, right? <laughs> we might have to hit up the the firm that actually just uh Reinvested into Mavic, tell them to get some drills for their boys. Yeah, hello. <laughs> Just get some drills. Just get some drills, guys. Don't use don't use rim brake fast. That's been tested and proven, and it's good enough. Let's do a whole new wheel tech that's heavier and rubs in crashes. Gonna be a hot road. You land on a dice and slice. Like, let's make the brakes. You know, let's put touring brakes, mountain bike brakes, gravel brakes, e-bike brakes on these little skinny wheeled seven kilo bikes and add half a kilo to them. Let's make wheel changes slower. Let's make mechanics life's jobs even harder than it already is. Let's give anxiety for riders because it's not really hard enough to be a pro cyclist with how cutthroat it is with the weight and the time cuts and the performance and all the enhancements, etc., etc. Let's make it even more difficult and let's give them disc brakes which are more unreliable at that level where everything is to the nanometer needs to be working. Let's do that. Nah, I disagree. This is a bad thing for the world too. Disc brakes need to go. They need to stay in gravel, stay on e-bikes, stay on mountain bikes, stay for the noobs. Even even for the noobs, disc brakes 
you know, I'll see people crashing down Norton Summit and stuff because they've got more power on their brakes. That gives them more confidence, but they don't have any more skills. So now they're going fast. It's like giving a, a learner driver a Porsche 911 twin turbo and go, hey, it's got really good brakes. They're going to kill themselves because they've got all this power. And they go, well, the brakes are really good. They're going to go faster. Then they're going to go, oh, my God, I'm losing. I'm going to hit the brakes. But it's too late, baby. It's not how fast you go. It's how you go fast. This brake's got to go. Even for noobs, that can be dangerous. Anyway, that's the deal. Okay. Let's have a look at some of the rim brake performances here. This is Tadej Pogger car. It's called Pogger Rim. And this is this is what it's about. When every second matters. Look at that. Just graceful. Rim brakes are just more graceful on the road. I'm a fan of discs. So just 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 so we're not just so we're clear on that. Look at this. Disc brake rider in the red. There looks like Yates sucking on the wheel of the rim brake rider. And he's still going to, Tadej Rimbrake still going to win. He's still going to win. Look at this, two versus one. And look at that. They've got the jump on him. They've got the jump on him. And they're going to go around the corner. Oh, your disc brakes, you can brake later. You can't touch the brakes. They do not touch the brakes. Look at that, not even on the brakes in the corner. You can't touch the brakes. Because if you do, you're going to lose position. And look at that. Look at that. It almost had to roam in the barriers to try and win. And still, that acceleration on the rim brake. Boom, baby. And that's what we're talking about. High five there from you. Good, good sportsmanship. That's the winning edge. Rim brakes give you that. Disc brakes don't. Disc brakes have no place in the world tour. And if you think I'm wrong, fight me, bro. Fight me. Zusammenschlagen lassen und nach so drei vier Kilometer Steigung jetzt sind sie drin. Das ist der erste. Das ist jetzt das geht gleich los. Da 10 Prozent für Laurent Roux 5:22. Und da gibt es niemand mehr dazwischen. Elf Kilometer hier Livingston. Nein, das ist Vinuco. Ja, ist Vinuco. Pardon. Und Lenz, alles noch attackiert, ist weg. Ulrich hat... Ja, weg. Das ist ja unglaublich. Ulrich Wer hätte das gedacht? Wer hätte Ohne... das gedacht, dass er so noch fahren kann? Ich glaube nicht, dass Ulrich... Weg ist. Nein, ich sag nicht weg, aber abgehängt. Er schaut sich, er schaut sich um. Und wie schaut er sich um? Das war eine Provokation, dieser Blick. Natürlich, sowas macht Eindruck. So wie die Beine. Und jetzt ist die Frage. Jan Ulrich konnte sich schonen. Die Mitstreiter haben sich verbraucht. Er fährt seinen Rhythmus und er fährt hier.